The Gallup poll of religious preferences consistently in this country finds that 90% of us or more believe in God. 90% or better believe in God. That's higher than many other countries around the world for various reasons, I believe. If you believe in God, you are in a solid majority opinion. Now for me, the more interesting follow-up question would be, um, tell me what kind of a God you believe in. What is your God like? How near or how distant is this God? Is this God personal and approachable and interested and involved? Or is the God you have come to believe in removed and disinterested and somehow way out there? One of the psalmists says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Does the fear of God mean dread, anxiety, sweaty palms type of fear? Or for you, does the fear of God seem more like awe, more like wonder, a reality so great that you cannot grasp it? that leaves you speechless. You can't find the words that would capture it. Well, those are some of the thoughts that came to me as I was studying this week on this story from the book of the Acts of the Apostle about Paul, the early Christian missionary, as he makes his way to the city of Athens in Greece. Paul and some of his companions have crossed over from Asia to Europe, a really significant move from the Asian continent where the faith began to the European continent where it would find its future. From Turkey and Asia Minor to Macedonia and Greece through Philippi and Thessalonica and Berea and now down to the capital city of uh, Greece, Athens. Athens, that splendid city of culture and philosophy and learning, a remarkable place, a place on many people's bucket list. Paul, as usual, begins seeking out the Jewish community, seeking areas of familiarity and connection. And from there, he wanders to the city center and the Areopagus the place where people are gathering on a regular basis to talk about new things, the latest fads. What is current among the thought of folk in Athens? Paul wants to talk about Jesus of Nazareth, the one he knows as, a, as the resurrected Christ. And so he needs some kind of image to begin, some connection to be made between these uh, Athenians and the God he wants to talk about in Jesus Christ. And he finds a godsend in that wandering through the city, he finds an altar on which is inscribed to an unknown God. Athens and most of the world had a large list of gods. Some of them were homegrown. Others were kind of taken over and borrowed from other places. Belief structures, which were designed to answer those basic human questions, why and how and what for. Multiple gods created to answer multiple questions. Yes, those savvy Athenians had thought of everything, a whole listing of gods, and then to make sure that nothing was overlooked, an altar to an unknown god. One they haven't yet discovered, but might be important to them. You can well imagine that more than 90% of the people of Athens believed in some kind of God. So Paul then is off and running. The God unknown to the Athenians, he says, is really the God of Jesus Christ, is the Messiah. 
And in the sermon that he preaches, these words come to him. God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in man-made temples, nor does he need anything that we can supply by working for him, since it is he himself who gives life and breath and everything else to everyone. From one man he created all races of humankind and made them live throughout the whole earth. He himself fixed times and limits of the places where they would live. He did this so that they would look for him and perhaps find him as they felt around for him. Yet God is actually not far from any one of us. The sermon title comes from that phrase, as they felt around for God, as they felt around for God. If you look at the Hebrew, I mean the Greek, the words suggest the cautious groping of a blind person. Someone who's using their fingers to fall along a, a bench or a wall or a table or a door, finding enough familiarity with what they are touching to have the courage to take the next step. Life lived like that, touching, finding something that makes sense, and then moving on a little bit more. And I think that's a great way to talk about faith journeys, our faith journeys. In this life, we are feeling around from God, for God, not so much thinking about God, but feeling around for God, seeking places where we can touch and be in touch with reality, something new that will help us on the journey. The truth is we will always be blinded to the full manifestation of God. God is always beyond our best imaginations, even on our best days. Yet the journey continues for us. <coughs> And we have an advantage over those ancient Athenians. For many of us, from little on up, have heard the Jesus stories, have we not? The Jesus parables about the realm of God, the ways in which Jesus touched people during his public ministry. We have come to say that in Jesus we see the face of God and even the heart of God that by knowing Jesus, the life he lived, we come ever closer to the God of this vast universe in which we live. So for us, the feeling around for God is informed by our familiarity with the life of Jesus. How Jesus was especially interested and had a special affinity to those on the fringes of his society. And on the fringes of his society were children, were women, were lepers, were Samaritans, were the sick, those possessed by demons. Yes, Jesus did talk to the upper crust as well, but it was the young people, the old people, the powerless people that got his most attention. Well, we may still function much like blind people, slow to understand, slow to comprehend, slow to catch on, but our knowledge of Jesus has to be a tremendous help for us. Certainly God cannot be fully known, never captured, never fully defined or categorized. Our finite minds just are not up to that task. But God is near to us, even knowable, at least in part. We know God in the beauty and intricacies of the wonder of the world in which you and I live. Amazing world. Things so small, things so vast. We only touch a little bit of it. The world about us which has been entrusted to our care. Talk about foolishness. Entrusted to our care. 
God is knowable in the love and compassion of human beings. Fallible though we are, at best we find new evidence of our rightful destiny in our ability to love the neighbor and to love ourselves as we come to appreciate God's influence in our lives. God is knowable as people like us still hold on to a vision of a better world, a better world not governed by power and winning and getting, but a world that values mercy and peace and love of neighbor, a world of promise, a world of justice. God is noble in moments of wonder and mystery when we suddenly catch a glimpse of one of God's mighty acts, God's boundless perseverance, God's continuing in investment in a world that God still thinks is redeemable, redeemable through us. In those times, the God of the first century becomes very contemporary, confronting us with difficult teachings to be sure, assuring us that we are loved and valued and that we are captured by a love that will not let us go. Now perhaps we want more concreteness than all I have just described, more tangible proofs, more certainty in this opaque world of shadows in which we live. But God is as near to us as breathing in and breathing out. And this God nudges us to take our next little steps of faith, halting probes into meaning and identity, and yes, of courage. For this is true. Our searching for God is more than matched by God's searching for us. And this also is true, that our yearnings for God are more than matched by God's yearning to be with us. To meet us in places like this with other searchers, people also on the way. But God also wants to meet us in the unlikeliest of places, wherever we are, wherever our feet take us, whatever is around the next corner, whatever we encounter, and whomever we encounter. So that's our life, feeling around for God. That's our faith as we know it. So rejoice that God is there, as God is here, as God is everywhere. Our feeling and our searching are not in vain. Trust God. Amen.